I live in Florida, where the weather's a little unpredictable and power is not always guaranteed. So, I bought some solar panels used off a of Facebook Marketplace, wired them up and threw them in the yard. We've been trying to run the print farm partially on solar, but this weather sucks, so let's get into it. Welcome to the channel. We're we'll talking about solar panels and whether you filmed a bit of a video before you got a haircut and now you got a bit of a continuity error or you happen to live in an area with inclement power, maybe expensive energy or honestly just think this stuff is pretty cool. Photovoltaics are actually a great way to save a little bit of money on your energy bill. See, one of the major issues with photovoltaics is if you lay them on the ground, they're not at the optimal angle and well, the, the grass gets everywhere. And well, if you happen to live in Florida, you could potentially get uh, some angry customers, if you will. But see, I only paid $150 for all these panels. And while they're used, I can't put them on my home anymore. This is not their final resting place. Obviously, we have weed overgrowth here and I gotta somehow get in between it and mow. And currently that's not possible. So we're gonna utilize 3D printing to make this better. But I want to challenge you guys. What can you think of? I've got an idea for a dual tracking array that will also fold the panels flat or lay them down on the ground when we do have inclement weather because this is Florida. We have inclement weather. It's just a thing that we live with. And obviously we don't want to destroy the panels even though they're old and they're not outputting their full wattage. But let me show you what we're working with on the battery so you can get an idea. This is just a start and a proof of concept, but it's already working. Let me go get that battery. All these solar panels for these two little batteries. And while well, yes, this is still a start, we have an EcoFlow River 2 Pro and a Delta 2 here. And the goal with these is to have portable, movable, reliable power sources. And well, it's actually been working pretty well. What we do, is all the solar goes into the Delta II here, and then it outputs to charge this River 2 Pro. The goal is that, well, this one can take more wattage in with a higher voltage, so uh, more power. And yes, I'm aware there's inefficiencies involved with these inverters, but 800 watt hours and a full kilowatt hour, and both of which I can pick up with just one hand. And that means that having portable, reliable, movable power is important. But see, the trick to both of these is their inputs. The Delta II is capable, on paper, up to 2,700 watts max. And it's rated continuous at 1,800 watts, which, if you'll note, is about as much just standard US wall outlet. So Grant, you might be saying, how do you use these batteries to power a print farm. Well, that's the trick. These can also be grid tied. And that's what we've done. Inside of the EcoFlow app, I can actually set when these things will kick on solar only and when they'll kick on for AC. But I can also set for when the wall itself will take over so that below a certain amount, the wall takes over and above a certain amount, it charges solar only. So if we are drawing a lot of power and the solar can't keep up, which it often can't, we are able to still get the job done without running out of battery because that's actually the value of having this generator style system where it can take power from the wall when it needs it, but it often never does. And if you've watched any of our recent live streams and hey, we'll card to them so you can go take a look, we've been running those as much as physically possible, completely off-grid. And that includes the air conditioner that draws over a thousand watts constant to barely keep my garage above 80 degrees. Uh, there's gonna be a whole uh, shop garage renovation build series coming soon. Likely a lot of it's gonna be streamed, but we're probably gonna do that for members only and Patreon and all that. So if that's the kind of thing that you wanna see, make sure to join a couple of bucks a month. We'll get you access to all that and lots of other behind the scenes content. So why are we getting into this, right? My power's relatively affordable and it's pretty darn reliable, all things considered. 
But I've always wanted to do a fully off-grid print farm. And I know I can't be alone on this because 3D printers can draw a ton of power with our Magneto X having a 1000 watt heated bed all on its own. You can easily overcome what one of these are able to do. And that's why I like that the Delta II can actually do 2700 watts peak output. Because yeah, if you're running quite a few printers and they all happen to heat up at once, you can actually pop breakers. Our goal is to actually get bigger batteries. So hi, EcoFlow. I bought these myself. Can you help me on the next ones? And while yes, these are refurbished, it was from an eBay sale and I didn't pay a ton of money for them. I got like 700 bucks between the two of them. They have been invaluable where I've used the River 2 Pro to do mobile 3D scanning for hours on end without any loss in power. And the Delta 2 has been powering the entire garage all on its own since we installed it. But the goal is to actually look at removing most, if not all, of the entire print farm from being grid reliant. Right now we have large battery backups and we actually utilize this solar system plus these EcoFlows to charge those big batteries when the power goes out, but we are limited. So we're gonna look at building something bigger or maybe EcoFlow gives us big enough batteries that it won't matter. I, I don't know. I don't care who sponsors the battery build. So EcoFlow, Jackery, Anchor, doesn't matter to me. We would love to work with you guys to do something like this and show what off-grid 3D printing can do. We do have pretty high standards in terms of needs, but we aren't against DIYing a system because let's be real, if I just brought in $20,000 in batteries and did a whole professional system and it was $100,000, that's not realistic. We're doing this on a budget. I bought those panels off a of Facebook marketplace, met my brother who has a pickup truck. We stuck him in the back of the pickup truck and drove him back to the house. It was jank, but we made it work. And that's part of what this tech is all about, finding unique ways to take already existing things and make it work. But yeah, if you want me to talk more about this stuff, we can get some experts on and talk more about photovoltaics, talk more about lithium batteries, and talk more about going off grid with 3D printing. Do note, if you are not a licensed professional in the United States, you cannot install these panels up on your house. It is not legal, which is why we're going to do these all in my yard or somehow attached to the fence over there if we need to. We will see what the future holds. DIY or buy, we will certainly see, but I'm looking to do right about 30 to 40 kilowatt hours, if not more worth of stored energy here at the shop to enable us to run completely off-grid during hurricanes, during storms, during just a car crashes into a pole and takes out the grid in my area. Or literally the other night when we ran over two hours on pure batteries alone when the fuses in the lines blew because that's the kind of stuff that can happen. And if you're running a business doing 3D printing and you don't have some sort of battery backup, you're gonna wish you did because they quickly pay for themselves in just the time savings alone. What I'm trying to get at is we're gonna be utilizing 3D printing to solve some complex issues with these panels that yes, there are off the shelf solutions, but that's why we're gonna do a, well, off grid DIY or buy series where we dig into this and learn a little bit more about, well, green energy, if you will, try to lower power bills and remove reliance from somebody else doing their job. Because ultimately the thing of a small business is you want to remove every possible method of failure that you can. And the more that you remove, the better value you can bring to your business. So if I can re remove my reliance on the grid and produce my own power with these panels and hopefully quite a few more in the future, then it doesn't matter what time of day it is, where we're at. Heck, we could build these panels to be fully mobile and take them on the road so that if we were needed to deploy somewhere with 3D printers, maybe in a mobile shipping container of sorts, that we would be able to solve whatever problem that we would have by either plugging into shore power or using the sun to get extra power. So even in the sun, we're able to pull almost 400 watts with even, you know, a couple of the panels in the shade there. And 
yeah, we could do better on this. And we're gonna be utilizing 3D printing technology to make this better because while I'm in the shade of a tree, it gets quite bright here in Florida because the angry ball of fusion right there in the sky. So this is an upcoming plan for us. I'm showing right about 350 watts right now. And I guess, of course, the other problem that we deal with is the clouds. I think it's a cool proof of concept. It was never intended to do more than just be a proof of concept. But the fact that it even works is super cool to me. And I bet it is to a lot of you as well. These systems are going to I got the mosquito. I dropped the camera, but I got the mosquito. So other than making for a pretty decent seat, these systems are also designed to help us prepare for hurricane season here in Florida. And while technically it's almost over, right? We've only got a couple of more months left until hurricane season is over. This is gonna help us any time that we run out of power and be able to help sustain the entire print farm when power does go out, especially if it goes out during the day, because, you know, we can supplement it with some solar panels, which are pretty freaking awesome. My goal is to bring you guys along with me for the journey, and I hope you enjoy this. I know this is a little bit different than our regular con. It's more of just, you know, you and I chatting through a GoPro, of all things. I'm not even wearing a mic. But I think it's important for this to be something that even the regular person that has a 3D printer that could buy a battery or two, that could even DIY a battery if they wanted, could get involved with and build if it was something that they wanted to do. So if you like this kind of thing, get subscribed because more 3D printing content is coming soon, but also more solar content is coming soon. So yeah, if you like this kind of thing, make sure to get subscribed, leave a like and all that. And a huge thank you goes out to all of our channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5. I am trying to film here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And a huge thank you goes to all of our channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 here. I'm not cutting that out. That's that's too funny not to cut out. Thank you to making this kind of thing possible, right? It, it is because of y'all's support in our Discord where I've been talking about this for months, for months, and then finally bit the bullet and did it. And it's because of your guys' support that we've been able to do this kind of thing. So thank you. Right below me will be the coverage from 3D Printopia 2023, because, oh yeah, we're gonna be at 3D Printopia this weekend. So come and say, hey, if you want. It's the 27th and 28th of September, 2024. So if you're watching this after that date, you're too late, it's already happened. And right next to that will be our tour of Printed Solid because you know we're gonna be doing another one. But hey, stay safe out there, stay cool out there, dude. It's like seven o'clock at night. The sun is basically already set and it's still like 85 degrees out here. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Don't get me wrong. I like fast cars. I also like doing cool stuff. Also, is that a friend? <gasps> if not friend, why friend shaped? Hello. I'm not touching him. You should know you don't you don't touch hairy caterpillars. You don't. They can make you itchy. Anyways, see you guys later. Take care.